and number six. <laughs> Hey there, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, and we're gonna go do some fun stuff today. We're gonna teach you guys how to cook competition style chicken. I have a pack of chicken thighs here, which is what I usually cook in competition. We're gonna show you how we select the chicken, how we trim the chicken, how we season it, leave it overnight, when we cook it in the pit, just like I do at a real contest. So we're gonna get started right now. So what I have here is a pack of chicken thighs. There are many different kinds of thighs out there you can buy. Uh, there's the Tyson, there's Foster's, there's uh, in California, there's Manny's Chicken. So pitmasters are typically pretty picky about the kinds of thighs they want to use. I like to find uh, thighs with really nice uh, big size, about say five, five to seven ounces. And I'm looking for thighs that have a nice uh, white skin and uh, doesn't have any more blemish on it. And uh, we're gonna take these pieces of chicken thighs and trim them to size. I'm gonna show you guys how we do a Slappy Daddy Championship Barbecue Chicken. So here it goes. So the first thing you wanna do is stretch, stretch the skin out like so. And uh, you want to kinda go back to the back, flip it over, look at it and see if you can trim it into a little uh, rectangle. Uh, you notice that always on the front end here, there's always a leading edge of fat right there. And that leading edge of fat needs to come off. So we try, I should use a sharp knife, trim it off, flip it over, try to see if I can square up the chicken, like so. And uh, square it on this side, like so. And you notice that I'm not trimming through the skin, I'm just carefully trimming around the chicken. I want to create a nice rectangular shape, like so. And on this side here, there is a uh, little line here where I'm going to make a trim on the chicken to kind of round it off, right here. Some of the meat here, get the bone off. And right now, I have a rough shape of a chicken thigh surrounded by a rectangle of skin. And we're gonna trim the skin around like so. Trim the edge so that now I have a nice piece of chicken thigh that kind of looks like a little pillow. And that's how we trim competi chicken, competition chicken. And uh, it's basically a little pillow of chicken. All we need to do now is to repeat this <laughs> another 15 times. So in a contest, what I do is I trim about 16 pieces of chicken. I cook them uh, in a foil pan or on the grate. And then once the crust sets, we're going to go ahead and foil it. Because what's happening is that there's a lot of collagen underneath the chicken skin. And uh, we have to render the collagen because competition chicken, especially championship chicken, has bite through skin. Right? So here's one piece. I'm going to trim a second one just to show you what it looks like. Let's pick another piece here. Let's see here, this piece looks pretty good. Make sure the skin has no blemish. This one looks quite clean. And if there's any blemish, any feathers, uh, any things sticking on the skin, I will probably pick another piece. Or sometimes I will take the skin from a better looking piece and drape it over this thigh. I want the thighs to be the final weight, about five and a half to six ounces in size. So back again, trim the leading edge fat. Square off the, the bone here, where this line is here, over here, like so. Cut it off. Like so. Stretch the skin back again. Flip it over. Trim a little rectangular piece using the bone as a reference point. Trim a little triangle. And leave about a quarter inch of the skin around so that when I cook the chicken, I can drape the skin over the edge, leave a quarter inch overhang so that if the skin shrinks a little bit, I'll still have enough skin to cover my chicken thigh perfectly. The reason this is called sometimes a devil meat by teams is because sometimes a lot of teams tend to want to scrape the skin, uh, the, the fat underneath the skin. I don't do that. I create beautiful butt pillows of chicken and uh, that's basically how the trim for me works. It's been good enough to uh, help me win uh, first place USA in the chicken category in the KCBS rankings in 2012. And I beat out about maybe 5,000 teams to first place in the USA. So uh, that was my crowning accomplishment. We're gonna show you exactly what I do when I do my chicken thighs. We trim uh, our 16 thighs and uh, they're right here. And uh, we're gonna use uh, my chicken rub on them and uh, we will see how they uh, fare. Uh, if you look down here, we have the uh, 16 thighs ready to go. And I'm gonna gently shake the rub evenly. So this is the uh, 
first place USA chicken wrap that I developed. Uh, I've been in development for about eight years, and I was uh, fortunate enough in 2012. It was good enough uh, to help me win first place USA. Many teams have used it to win first place in Grand Championships, and I can at least count on one world champion, Doug Shiding of Road Cookers from Houston. Uh, he uh, cooked the Houston Livestock and Rodeo, and uh, won the world championship using it. Uh, and he invited me uh, last year to go cook with him. It was a heck of a lot of fun. And many other teams have told me, and they send me pictures all the time on Facebook and Instagram, how they won first place. So this uh, rub has a lot of uh, different ingredients in them. Uh, what is characteristic about rub? It's got a sweet, spicy, tangy flavor, and that seems to be wowing the judges. And uh, it seems to work all, all over parts of the country, including the Midwest, the East Coast, and the West Coast. So uh, many people use this, and a lot of backyarders uh, have become backyard chicken heroes just using this rub. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a very even layer of rub, as you can see here. And uh, what you want to try to do is you want to wait about 30 minutes and uh, let it get tacky. Uh, you want to do this obviously in a cool room so it doesn't uh, kind of get into the unsafe temperature range of uh, you know above uh, well, too too high in the 40 140 danger zone once you're done you're gonna flip it over and repeat on the other side to get the rub to saturate and soak into the meat we're doing what we call a dry brine here so what happens is uh, we're gonna let this sit about 10 12 hours and the salt from the rub is gonna draw the moisture out, become tacky and that salt will penetrate the meat to flavor the meat all the way down to the bone so that when you cook it and you take that one bite of the chicken, it's gonna have that pop in flavor and it's gonna pop in the judge's mouth like basically a symphony of flavors and that's how you score a perfect score on chicken in the chicken entry. All right, so we uh, waited about 30 minutes, got a little bit tacky. Now obviously you need to do this in a cool room. If not, you should refrigerate your chicken, but it's become tacky and the rub has a chance to soak in. Now we repeat on the other side. When I do this at a contest, it's done at night, so the uh, weather is gonna usually be pretty cool. I would not recommend you doing this in the heat of the afternoon sun because uh, the chicken will be uh, reach unsafe temperature. We flip it over and uh, we're gonna repeat the exercise on the other side. Uh, you notice as I flip it over, I'm stretching the skin so that the skin is nice and even, covers the entire thigh. And soak, get the flavors to soak right through and penetrate the skin and get into the actual meat itself. I'm going to repeat my exercise on this side, like so. On this side, you just do a tad less. And you need notice how even I'm spreading the uh, rub. It's very vitally important that you control the, how much rub you put on because uh, as we say in competition, win or lose a contest is one missing shake of rub or just one too many shakes. So it's very important to get it nice and even so that when your chicken cooks, there's no blemish, there's no uneven coloring so that the chicken will look a beautiful golden color. And uh, that's uh, how you can score a 10 on the appearance. And once you score, I'm sorry, you score a nine on the appearance. And uh, once you score a perfect score on appearance, uh, the, the rest is kind of downhill. You can get a good score on the taste. Now you notice I'm going one pass and I'm going back again just to make sure that I get it nice and even. Uh, this is where you need good lighting when you do this to make sure that uh, all the pieces of chicken are coated very very evenly and I take time at this point to make sure that every single square inch is well coated onto my chicken and that's ready now. So what I'm going to do now is take it and put it into a full pan. We're going to let this sit overnight for about, about 10 hours or so. We're going to cook it usually in a contest. I put in my chicken around kind of 940-ish. Uh, it'll take about say 45 to 55, 60 minutes to crust. After the chicken crusts, I'm going to put it in a foil pan and I'm going to cover it kind of like the way you cook ribs and that's primarily to tenderize the skin because there's a lot of collagen in the skin that we want to make sure that the skin is bright through tender. That's the hallmark of good competition style chicken. So we're going to show you the next how we put it in the foil pan. All right, we're going to load the uh, chicken in the pan. I'm going to carefully place it in two rows like so. And I'm going to do about four per row so that they sit nice like little pillows. This technique is called dry brine. So I'm actually letting the salt in the rub, brine the chicken. Between a wet brine technique and a dry brine, I tried both. I won with both, but I prefer a dry brine because I think it penetrates the chicken 
as well as it doesn't compromise the uh, integrity of the meat. So the meat stays nice and firm and I think that that tastes better than when sometimes you over brine it or you over marinate it, the chicken looks tastes a little bit soggy. Alright, chicken is nicely seasoned, both of them, and uh, we're going to cover it up and let it rest in the refrigerator, just under 12 hour marinade using my rub. It's got a perfect amount of salt to season the meat and uh, once we get to the 12 hour mark, it's ready to cook. Now when you're doing, the, doing this at home, you don't really have to wait 12 hours, you can cook it right away. It still tastes, it will taste very, very good. The chicken is now cooked and uh, we can tell from the color, just how the chicken looks like and it's ready to be trimmed before we set the sauce. I don't put sauce on my chicken until after it's cooked. So we put it for about between 45 minutes to an hour to get a nice crust. And uh, we then put a foil cover on it to let it uh, cook some more and tenderize the uh, collagen in the skin. And this is the final product, just beautiful pieces of chicken. What I do for competition is I pick the best six pieces and trim them for the box. So let me pick some of my six pieces that I like here. I'm looking for symmetry, looking for the uh, evenness, and I want just to have six perfect pieces for the box, and we'll show you how we trim them for competition, and how we sauce them and set them for the box. So here are my six pieces. What I want to try to do is I want to trim it to size. So what I do is I like to trim after I cook, that way, I don't waste a lot of time trimming the chicken raw because when the chicken is raw, it tends to sh uh, shrink unevenly. So even if you trim it perfectly when it's raw and every piece is perfect, by the time you get done cooking, it's going to be a little bit uneven. So this one is trimmed, ready to go. Trim this one, looks about right. And number six, okay. So what I do now is I kind of line them up so that we can get similar looking pieces together. So I have a little bit of symmetry on all the different pieces that I want in the box. So I've got six pieces here. I have my sauce and you can use any sauce you like. So in order to not get any blemish, I uh, use a tool called a pigtail. And I dip the chicken in the sauce like so. Pick it up, dip it and put it in a pan, like so. And I usually set this in the pit for about uh, five minutes. It's ready to go into the judge's box. Like this piece here, you see, and it's a little piece of uh, leg here. I like to take them off, so that it's good. All right, we can dip the rest of them in here. Get a nice finish. When you pick up your chicken using a pigtail tool like this, and you dip it in the sauce, you're gonna be able to get a flawless finish. I'm gonna now set this tray in the pit, and uh, it's going to sit for about five minutes, and we'll show you how it looks like after that. Okay, so here's the chicken after about five minutes in the pit, and uh, you can see it's got a beautiful color. This is how competition chicken looks like. So these little pieces are ready to be plated in the box. And uh, this is how you prepare competition chicken. And I'm very fortunate. Uh, some of these chicken pieces I've made in the past have uh, made it all the way to uh, first place USA in the uh, KCBS chicken category. I hope you liked this video and uh, you've got some ideas on how to cook chicken now. So if you like more videos in the future, let me know. So please go ahead, like this video, subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, see you later.